Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about Bone Crossed by Patricia Briggs, and this is book four in the Mercy Thompson series. So before I get into my review, I do want to state that for anyone who is bothered or triggered by mentions or references to assaults or rape, either go into this book with caution or not continue further in the series because there are quite a few mentions to Mercy's rape from the previous book and her suffering the after effects and her trying to move on from her life from this horrible event. So yeah, throwing that out there now before I say anything else. So continuing on, this book picks up pretty much immediately where the last one leaves off. Mercy has chosen Adam as her mate, which as I'm happy about, not just because I adore Adam, because I like Sam too, but it is nice that this big love triangle between her, Sam, and Adam is solved in book four, and that's not going to be dragged out for the entire series, because honestly, I don't mind the odd love triangle every once in a while, but just... I don't like them for the most part. It's very rare that there is a love triangle that I really enjoy or one that I'm really satisfied with. So it is very nice that, you know, this isn't being drawn out the entire series because that would get old real quick. <laughs> At least for me. So glad that is solved and out of the way and done with. And can I just say, I love how patient and understanding Adam is with Mercy's whole like mental state. She is still suffering severe anxiety and panic attacks from her rape in the previous book and just how patient he is not wanting to push her into anything and just, Adam, you are fantastic. <laughs> Mercy has been waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak, from her actions against the vampires. You know, Mercy killing Andre in book two, I think it was, and in killing him, killing the secret to making, like, demon-ridden sorcerer vampires. Now, Stefan and Wolf managed to cover things up, so it looked like Mercy didn't kill him, but, you know, secrets can only stay secret for so long and she has just been waiting for Marcilla, the leader of the little vampire. Is it pronounced C? C I don't know. The group of vampires in the Tri-Cities. She's been waiting for her to uncover the truth and to come after her. And unfortunately, it seems that Marcilla has discovered what has happened and she is not happy with Mercy. And it's just not Mercy's neck that's on the line. She is worried that all sorts of her friends are going to be dragged in as a result. You know, the wolves being dragged in because Adam has claimed her as his mate. And she doesn't want any of them to get hurt. Her human friends, the uh, boy Gabriel that she has hired to help at the garage and his family. Tony, the police officer. Just anyone that she has connection with, she is afraid is going to be hurt because of her actions. And that is all I am really comfortable saying without risking spoilers. So yeah, I thought this was a really good addition to the book. It is nice seeing that Mercy had this nice little supportive community around her. Not just Adam, but her own mother, who upon finding out what happened to Mercy, just drives straight to see her, to be there for her. Z being there for her. Just loved seeing the support she's been getting. And I do like how we're getting to see some of her recovery. And I hope to see more positive progress in her recovery in the future books. Because though I've already read them, I am blanking on like 99% of the details that happens in all of them. So it's almost like I'm reading from them for the first time again. And just... I love this series. I love Patricia Briggs' writing style. I love all these characters she's created. I like that we get to see more of Stefan in this book and more about the vampires and like 
how they function and just the complexities of this little world, this little supernatural world we got going here. And yeah, that's really all I can say without giving spoilers. I do recommend this book if you've gotten this far in the series so far. I highly suggest you keep reading because it is good. And I very much look forward to going on to book five. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go into a short spoilery bit. So if you do not want to get spoiled, I suggest you click right now and come back after you catch up. So. Um, like I said before, I enjoyed how we got to see more of the vampires and like getting a better idea how they function and just the freaking politics in this book. Now, usually I'm not a big fan of politics, be them real or fictional, but just this is one of those series where I'm just fascinated by like the little subtle like manipulations and like I, I don't know how to phrase it just the subtleness of some of these actions and the manipulation going on between behind those actions and I just find it really fascinating like how Marcella well she's not happy that Andre died you know was just using like her predicted rage to manipulate Mercy and the wolves and all that to help her flush out the um, traitors in her little community. And not only that, she couldn't kill some of these traitors because they weren't originally of her make. So she had to be creative to get rid of them so they don't try and take her out. I, I just find that all so fascinating how she like maneuvered that and just how so much of this book was just to do that and I don't know it was just super fascinating. I can't believe I didn't mention this. I also like how we got a little more info on how pack bonds work and how it, things function in a wolf pack. I think all that was really creative too. I am super excited and interested to see how Marcella is going to be interacting with the pack now that they got that truce going on. And my heart goes out to Stefan so much. That guy is loyal almost to a fault. Even knowing that his human sheep, not a big fan of how vampires have to feed and all that, but you know what? Compared to how some of the other vampires treat their humans, Stefan is awesome. But at the same time, it's like, eh, that's a little messed up still. But I still, my heart went out for him. Him spending this time thinking that they are all dead. And him being tortured by the person he swore to serve. And he, he swore his loyalty to and all that. And just that big betrayal, my heart went out to him. And then to find out that he was had been used and manipulated for her own means, just... That poor guy's got to be so messed up. And it's like, you're not going to be the same after that. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't go back to the super happy Stefan, the same Stefan that Mercy had met. I mean, I hope he doesn't go all like, doom and gloom. That would be sad, because, you know, I wouldn't go as far to call him a precious cinnamon roll. But he's a nice guy. All things considering. <laughs> also... Unrelated. I love the fact that at first Stefan is a huge Scooby Doo fan. I don't know that just that fact makes me so happy. Not only because Scooby Doo was a big part of my childhood, but the fact that this big bad vampire is a huge Scooby Doo fan. I don't know. I just I find it funny, funny and entertaining. <laughs> but the whole little like conversation he was having with Chad about what was it, Dragon Ball Z, and him thinking Dragon Ball Z is better than Scooby-Doo, and Stefan being all, like, insulted over this. I don't know, I just... That greatly amused me. <laughs> also, poor Chad. This poor kid being, like, haunted by this very violent little ghost, and then, you know, having his mom and his dad, as well as him, kidnapped by this crazy vampire, his mother killed, and then, you know, her corpse brought to life as this, like, freaky zombie. 
and then just everything leading up to Stefan eventually getting him out of there. It's like, holy crap. That poor kid is gonna be so messed up because it's not exactly like you can tell all that to a therapist. Well, he could, but then you risk like the vampires coming after him. But it's like, that poor kid is gonna be so messed up. Another person that I worry for is Sam. It's kind of, you know, been hinted at since he was brought in during Moon Cold that something isn't right with Sam. There is something in him that is off, which isn't too uncommon for older wolves. You know, eventually they can't, you know, keep up with things, they can't adjust properly. As you age, he just become disconnected, can go crazy, sometimes even suicidal, and Sam is an old werewolf. And he has suffered a lot of loss. He has lost several mates that he loved, as well as several, several children. Either they didn't survive past childhood, or when they tried to go through the change, they just fat there. I don't know if any of them made it to old age. I can't remember. But he has lost a lot. And after a long time like he's lived, that's gonna pull at you. So I greatly worry for him. I just want Sam happy. Sam is sweet and precious and I just want to give him a hug. And was there anything else I wanted to mention? I don't think so. I think that is all I wanted to cover. So for anyone still watching, what do you think? Do you agree with some of the things I said? Disagree? What were some parts of the book you liked? What are some parts of the series you liked thus far? What are some things that you don't or didn't like? Let me know. Let's get a discussion going. So that is it for this video and I hope to see you guys next time.